Here's my new battery bank. So they are Rolls batteries. They are the S605. Um, I think they're 400 and... I can't remember right now, but they're 460 something amp hours each. Um, which adds up to a total of 1,460 amp hours, I think. Um, this is my battery room, where, um, yeah, obviously everything's going to be set up in here. So today, here we have uh, the tubes running over to my rack over there. I've got to install this box today and over here we have the ground mount for the solar uh, you see it's a little bit cold this morning that's uh, ice on the so I dug some big holes uh, underneath these bricks and filled them with a bunch of reinforced concrete and so here you see this uh, my ground mount, which is angled at 30 degrees and uh, facing is facing south. I mean, I looked at the magnetic uh, deviation here, and it was like one degrees off. So I tried to get it as uh, as, as as close to that as I could. I'm not very good at getting things straight. Um, <laughs> But I think it's good enough. Uh, it, it just pretty much has to face south here because there's hardly any magnetic um, magnetic deviation, declination, something like that. Anyway, so yeah, my job today is to run the cables. Uh, I've got big, uh, it's a zero zero gauge, 75 millimeter cables running from my battery room to here and then I'll mount the um, I'll mount the combiner box there and uh, that is what I'm going to do today hopefully I will be able to do more than just that but uh, let's get a, a good start in so here we'll have eight uh, 300 watt panels eight 300 watt panels you can see two of them here already that was just a temporary mount that I set up for them. You can see that they're obviously not at 30 degrees, not facing due south. But I just set them up like that and it's been, it's been good so far. So I've dug this out and I have my, oops, uh, whatever this is called in English, this box. Uh, it's a waterproof box. Um, and these are my cables that come they're buried under here and they come all the way from the solar panel structure and so now I'm going to pass this uh, it's over 50 kilos I reckon of uh, of um, copper double O copper wire which in Europe is 75 millimeters which is a bit bigger than than double O but uh, so I'm going to try and feed this through to my battery. I've managed to get the cable through to here, which was surprisingly easily easy. I just had to push it through because this cable is nice and uh, nice and thick and and sturdy. It just pushed right through. I didn't have to pull on the cable at all. So now I've tried pushing it through here, but. Um, this this uh, tube is a bit less rigid and there's less space so it's not wanting to go through um, I don't have a piece of string passed through here so here's a a little uh, trick that I saw on I think on Practical Preppers on Engineer 775's YouTube channel um, you take a piece of string and tie a small plastic bag to the end now we're going to shove this inside the hole with the string. This bag might be too big. Let's see if this works. Okay, 
make sure you've got enough string obviously that's my phone we'll ignore that and so now you want a hoover let's or vacuum cleaner let's see if I can do this with one hand turn this on There you go, you have your string passed through. That's a, <laughs> that's a really cool trick. So uh, yeah, I hope that one helps you as much as it's helped me because feeding stuff through pipes is normally a pain in the ass. This would of course be easier with two people. <laughs> I have a habit of doing things, or wanting to do things, by myself. I've got the big cables passed through, but um, as per usual, nothing's running smoothly. <laughs> I had to pull the cables back out because they wouldn't go through from here, from that end to here, and then pass them through this hole first because there's, the, the tubes are slightly smaller, and um, and there's a bit of a a bit of a corner or something. And so now my other problem is this. So the standard uh, these are double O. So this breaker, my 80 amp breaker, is uh, for a double O cable. Um, this double O is 72 millimeters squared and in Europe our standards are slightly different and the standard cabling is 75 millimeters squared. I think probably what I should have done in hindsight um, is go to a 70 millimeter I'm not sure if they have it they told me that the standard was 75 from 72 but um, I'm having a problem now because I can't get the the cable um, obviously to fit in the lug because there's three millimeters more of um, yeah of cable so I'm wondering now whether to just connect uh, to two of these kind of ring terminals and then go into the breaker um, or I think that's what I'm going to do this is the solution I've come up with so I've just put uh, battery lugs terminals whatever they're called on here and this goes on here and then now from here so these are just battery posts uh, from Blue Sea um, and so from here now I can go with the thinner cable off to my breaker which I will put um, somewhere up here I'm not sure yet but off to my breaker with some thinner cable and then uh, to the charge controller so I've managed to get this one on it just went on a couple of hairs that uh, wouldn't go in that's good because I thought I was going to have another nightmare with that and uh, I have to find some other solution so let's see if I can get this on here now I took, normally you just stick the cable in without unscrewing this but unscrewed it because I thought it's just easier to maneuver easier to maneuver the uh the cable it's so tight so that bit goes on there in the way at the same time. It's probably easier to do this the other way as in to put the cable in when uh, when this is there we go I wasn't on 
and this is already on. Uh, yeah. So that's all on. That's great. I'm gonna have to obviously set this in place a little bit better and fix everything down. But that looks awesome. I thought I was gonna have a nightmare with that, but it went on nicely. I'm not super impressed with this uh, combiner box from Outback. The screw on the negative bus bar doesn't hold. And then, I don't know if you can see, but in here, see the, uh, the rivets have just popped off the DIN rail there. And everything's a bit loose. The so next I'm installing one of these uh, midnight solar um, lightning arresters. Over here in Spain, again, <laughs> if you ask them for a lightning arrester, they look at you like, uh, like you're asking for something from another planet. Uh, nobody's heard of these lightning arresters. Apparently, we don't have lightning in Spain. Um, or at least, uh, they're quite happy for you to lose your whole solar system or some, have something blow up. Um, every time there's a storm. So you just uh, pop that through there. It has a little bungee on this side and then you just tighten it up. This has some LED lights that uh, you can see at night and I uh, mistakenly put them on the uh, on the panel side. So well, I'll, I'll have to look underneath to see it but if I have it on this side anyway it will kind of uh, all attention not that many people come around here but um so yeah anyway so the black goes to the negative bus bar red which is really more like pink like the pink at midnight solar goes up to positive and then just slide that one in here and this pink one and the green goes to ground, common earth ground. I noticed again with this uh, combiner box that you know this. Oh well, I've turned it on now. But look, it's all it's all loose. You know, it's not amazing build quality. For something that's not particularly cheap and Outback have it. Can you see? It's all loose. Outback have a good name. Not like I can send it back <laughs> to America. Anyway, it's getting the job done, even if I have had to modify it a little bit. But there you go, there's my uh, surge protector, the lightning strikes, which will hopefully protect my equipment if we get lightning in the area. So, what this does is it, it clamps. It clamps and it takes the excess, uh, as far as far as I uh, understand, it takes the excess electricity that's going through the system and, and, and does something with it. End of day one, and I've got my combiner box on, my big uh, cables running to my battery room. I've got uh, my lightning arrester on and then over here we have uh, over here I've got my bus bars on the wall I've got my main coming in from the solar panels and then I have to make a bunch of jumper cables to connect my batteries with uh, with this double O 
double O wiring. Um, I looked it up and uh, I, I looked it up in a few places, but recently on Just In Case, his channel, and he has a good video on how to size your wire. So these are the wires that uh, came with the batteries here in Spain. These look, uh, it even says made in Spain on it. Um, 1 times 35, that's th probably 35 mil. Um, so I'm going to be using 75 mil jumpers for the cables, so I'm going to have to make a bunch of those. I have to make all of the ones for all of these batteries. So yeah, end of day one, that's good. I've got the big cables through. Everything's on the wall, so tomorrow I will be making the jumper cables and uh, putting up my charge controller and maybe see how we go. I might get some solar panels uh, on the rack, but see how that goes. So yeah, that's it for today and thank you for watching. Please, um, yeah, tell me, get, leave me your comments and uh, what you think about my system. And yeah, that's it.